brings all kinds of confusion people who have labored for years working in different corporations now being downsized because the various parastatals and companies can no longer take you know people and so they have to downsize people there are companies that are downsizing people in the thousands i mean you just get up and come to work in the morning and see a notice board with your name and if you're not fortunate you and your wife and maybe any other person you know yeah so it's we must we must sincerely um reckon with the fact that it, it's generally speaking it seems to be a very difficult time for people not just financially but the trauma of living in an environment where um you humanly speaking do not know what will happen next are we together now you don't know what will happen next parents are confused obviously a major part of our leaders are confused their policies are clearly a product of trial and error and um, corporations are confused families are confused that their children being taken out of school because the parents cannot afford it i think it's more serious than most people think it is uh, especially because many of us here are young people and a number of us are in some way still dependent on some form of support directly or indirectly chances are that we will trivialize the gravity of what is happening around the nation because somehow we just know that someone somewhere is responsible for our needs but I, I want to really wake us up tonight and share with us a few keys the ember months generally in this nation i don't know for what reason has been characterized by a lot of um, phobia there's such a phobia for the ember months because most people over time have seen that it comes with certain not too pleasant experiences but then one of the things that we have been taught in this place and i've held as a personal conviction is that there is a mystery of exemption everybody say there is a mystery of exemption but exemption is not a product of desire exemption like many other realities in the kingdom depends on access to knowledge access to the keys that control those results desire is good is a starting point of anything but it's not enough desire in itself cannot produce any result there are many well-meaning people who um, desire certain things in their lives. There are people who desire the anointing. There are sincere pastors who want more of God's glory upon their lives, their congregations. There are ministries that sincerely desire growth and increase and expansion and results. There are jobless people who sincerely desire jobs. There are those working who sincerely desire promotion. There are barren women who desire children. Are we together? There are all kinds. Our, our society is full of genuine desires. But you see, desires by themselves do not produce results. Are we together? Much more than desires, we must have access to the truths that will deliver our expectations to us so if we must make maximal use of the remaining months of this year and this period of our lives it is important for us to again and again number one probe the foundation of our convictions probe the informations that you hold as true the bible reveals to us that there is a possibility that what a man calls light can be darkness it says be careful lest your light be darkness so i can hold on to a truth that may be based on my perception look like light but based on god's reference point may be darkness are we together so the bible teaches that we receive with meekness meekness requires that you bring yourself to the position of a learner not necessarily an ignorant person but one who realizes that there are more possibilities than he or she has experienced so far. It's a very powerful state in the spirit. 
is one of the states that attracts the presence of the Holy Spirit to the life of a man. The moment you come to an acknowledgement that there can be more than you have known and that the limit of your experience is not the limit in God, you immediately attract the presence of the Holy Spirit. There are a kind of people and there is a kind of spiritual posture that will attract the Holy Spirit to come and do business with you. And one of such is a heart of meekness. We live in a society where there are many people who and um, many of us are what we call elites. We, we come from uh, a very strong intellectual background. We've gone to school, we're intelligent, we have all kinds of accolades in honor of our intellectual investments. But let me tell you something about God. When in God's dealings with man, regardless of what you have acquired intellectually, which is very useful, when you come before him, you must realize that in the kingdom, there's no such thing as a learned person. You are either learning or you are in ignorance. The concept of being learned with God does not exist. Are we together? So you'd never put a full stop to your pursuit with God. There is always a new dimension. There is always a new possibility outside of the scope our current scope of understanding and the moment we just bring that position spiritually and we say we are learned i know this i know that i know this the bible says blessed are they that hunger and thirst only those who communicate their hunger and thirst to be filled if i'm not thirsty and you bring me water i may not appreciate the value of that water and then more so if you force me to take the water that which is supposed to be an act of kindness will now offend me. Are we together? That's why most times God will not by himself get up and initiate change in people. He will allow them. You see, let me tell you the way heaven works. Heaven does not act. Heaven reacts. Everybody say heaven reacts. There must be an action from the earth as a communication of desperation, a communication of passion, a communication of need and desire. So when a man cries unto God, Lord, have mercy on me, thou son of David. Jesus saw him, right? At the border of Jericho, he saw that man seated there. Only God knows how long he had been there. But it was costly for Jesus to assume the man needed help. And so he kept passing. And the man shouted the more, thou son of David, have mercy on me. The woman with the issue of blood. When she came, the Bible says she said to herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. The centurion left his house and came where Jesus was, pleading for him to do a miracle. So every time you need God's attention, you attract it by hunger, desire, and a desperate, repeated communication of that. You don't just sit down and wish and say, God knows my heart. No, God needs an expression. Those who really keep growing in the spirit are those who have made it a culture to never be satisfied with where they are, to never be satisfied with what they've seen. I've experienced the anointing, but Lord, I know there can be more. I've experienced prosperity, but I know there can be more. I've experienced wisdom. I've had encounters. I've had visions. I've had the, the operation of the prophetic, the miraculous, but I know that there is always more in God. So never put a full stop to your work with God. Don't even allow the current results in your life because of how frequent the results are. They can build a fortification around your life that stops you, reduces your impetus to pursue God and seek Him more. Hallelujah. You know, the, the greatest limitation to progressive success is the last one you've had failure does not make people backslide failure spurs people to do more but when you start having results chances are that on the strength of obvious results that you're having there might not be any desire to seek him again after all 
I, I may not be in a very high level of the healing anointing but at least there is something here and there there are miracles after all I may not have very deep access to revelation but at least I have a few things to share that attitude in the Bible is called complacency complacency when you build inertia to your pursuit so that it now impedes your desire to move forward the, your passion must be fresh it must be consistent and you, you, you should never tone down your desire for God hallelujah so this is very important what I'll be sharing with us tonight um I have come to a realization that any responsible man of God, any responsible ministry, any responsible structure, any responsible leadership, among other things, must develop an attitude to respond to the needs of the people. Are we together? When you build people, if God brings us together in a ministry like this, our growth must be intentional, our growth must be specific and then our growth must be it must be consistent and it is the assignment of every pastor every man of God every spiritual leader to stay with God and not just stay with God alone to sit through the agency of the spirit of wisdom and design a system of teaching people such that their growth becomes holistic are we together please if God is calling you into ministry here or you are a pastor you must understand that you cannot guess the way to build people there is a system of growth the same way a student goes to school and um, the, 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 the faculty or the department designs a system we call it a program that program is supposed to make the student come out with a certain understanding the program is intentional now here and there you could alter the programs with a few things or upgrade and add a few things but there is a structure you build people not through guesswork you build people through structure you see this that we are doing now we are not doing anything new necessarily there is a spiritual system that has been created that makes people powerful that makes people rise to a point of kingdom influence so what we are doing is we are aligning to and with the ways of God to guide and help every one of us to rise. Say amen. So every pastor must have a system. If God has declared that this for instance is a year of multiplied grace and influence then it should speak in the kind of messages that are communicated because people rise up by revelation. Are we together? So you must be able to communicate the truths that build people along the line of prophecy and then you must communicate the truth it is up to the man of God to stay with the Holy Spirit and monitor the spiritual growth of a people and bring relevant teachings that number one are life applicable no matter how deep your teachings are if they do not translate to life applicable principles that people can use to produce results in their lives every day then you are wasting their time are we together if the truths that you learn here cannot be used in your business cannot be used in your workplace cannot be used in school cannot be used in your place of influence wherever your sphere of influence and cannot be used in your own personal work with God the moment there is please someone respond to that baby can we have someone please hallelujah Praise the Lord. The moment there is a system or there is no system to communicate knowledge to you in such a way and a manner that your growth becomes holistic. You know, one of the saddest things, and, and, and I say this with a very heavy heart, with um, many churches and many ministries in Nigeria, is that the men of God do not view the people intentionally to prevail they don't build them intentionally to be agents of transformation they do not build them to be men of power so we have people of prayer who cannot do well we have people 
of prosperity who are bankrupt spiritually so every man of God must bring teachings that are not only life applicable but must make sure that the teachings are actually building people I personally believe that I will never be part of a church or a ministry where I sit under that anointing that man of God that influence for a, a, a an appreciable period of time and I cannot trace exactly the things that are happening in my life I think it's an utter waste of time praise the Lord so I want you to respect and value the teachings that come here by the grace of God we are not just spiritual people we are intelligent people we have stayed by the spirit of God to, uh, to find out the systems of the kingdom and the things that make things work and some of the things that I share with you are principles that I live by not principles I practice principles I live by and there are principles that have been responsible for undeniable results in the lives of people, organizations, territories, and so on and so forth. So these ideas are not a guesswork. They are not, they are not cunningly devised fables, as the apostle would say. They are tailor-made to build you. It's up to you to submit yourself to those teachings and practice them appropriately. And then you will see your life rise. May your life rise in Jesus' name. May your life rise in Jesus' name. May you be so powerful that as a person you are equivalent to a nation. In the name of Jesus Christ. So I have a few things that I want to share with us tonight. That in my opinion are the keys that can help any man survive the storms and the vicissitudes. That these seasons have brought upon us. There are principles that when we learn, we will be able to, regardless of the storms, um, we will ride above it and thereby demonstrating the fact that the kingdom of God is a more superior kingdom to any democracy, to any kind of system. We are demonstrators of the reality. The Bible says that we have been called to show forth. To show forth, right? It's the Greek word is 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 the is a is the word dogzazo not just is an a manifestation of the glory is showing forth like like um someone will bring people and show the products a display so when men say there is a casting down and you sustain the keys to say there is a lifting up you will compel men and they will want to come and find out what principles do you use there is no one on earth who wants to remain with an understanding that is not producing results. Even if do, they do not know that they need change. Everybody wants change. That's why we go to Habalist. That's why we change soap. We change houses. We change institutions. Nobody wants to camp around anything that does not produce. And let me tell you something. The options that are in the world now have reduced the patience of people. So the moment there is no result, people don't give you a second chance. They move immediately. If you have a product, for instance, generally speaking, and someone patronizes you and your product cannot deliver to expectation, that's all. It will take a long time before they return to you. Are we together? So it is with ministry. So it is with a lot of spiritual things. I, I can literally sense the frustration in the hearts of many pastors, many members, they are asking questions that for many people, no one is asking, is answering. Will we continue like this? If there is a God in heaven, why are we this way? Spiritually, financially, and otherwise. Hallelujah. Matthew 13, verse 11, popular scripture. Let's start from there tonight. Jesus was teaching and then he said, he made a very interesting statement Matthew 13 verse 11 it's projected please let's read together one to read now let me just let me just guide us a little to understand really what the kingdom of heaven is when the bible talks of the kingdom 
most times you find out especially in the new testament that there is an interplay of um, the phrase or the clause the kingdom of god and the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of god and the kingdom of heaven they are not the same they are not the same the kingdom of god represents any sphere any territory where the sovereign power and the sovereign control of god can find expression take note of my choice of words any sphere any atmosphere where the sovereignty of god can find expression is called the kingdom of god so the lake of fire is part of the kingdom of god because he designed it he created it he still has control over it the heaven of heavens belongs to the lord the earth is his footstool and every other place the psalmist said where can i hide from your presence so everywhere the influence of god can be extended to everything that was created by him constitutes his kingdom are we together so when you are talking of the kingdom of god you are referring to every sphere of influence practically speaking everywhere is the kingdom of god everywhere but when you talk of the kingdom of heaven now listen when jesus was teaching right in what we call the beatitudes um when he got to matthew 5 6 he began to teach them and he says thy kingdom come then he says thy will be done in earth as it is in the heavens are we together so the kingdom of heaven represents any sphere and any territory where the sovereign control of god has been permitted to find expression now not a sphere where god's sovereignty can find expression a sphere where the sovereignty can or has experientially been allowed to find expression and that happens when his will is being done are we together so the whole earth belongs to god but there are still witchcraft covens are we together there are still lives everybody was created by god but not everybody belongs to him are we together so the influence of the kingdom of god is everywhere with every witch with every wizard but only those who belong to him they have come into the experience of the kingdom of heaven they have allowed their lives to be an expression of the will of god the kingdom of heaven only finds expression in any territory and any life where the will of god experientially is being done are we clear about that now so that we do not just confuse the words i just felt like putting them in so that we can have it in perspective the kingdom of god his sovereign sphere he fills all things and in all the kingdom of heaven every territory every space where he has been allowed to find expression A very clear example of this is the federal republic of nigeria right you can call it the kingdom of nigeria everywhere but not every part of the kingdom of nigeria is directly as we know experientially under the control of the federal government is that true we have a forest like sambisa that is being contended with there are certain people within that territory who are refusing the sovereignty of the nation we have other aspects here and there we have um, several pockets of places who have refused to subscribe to the laws of the land now those areas those territories are rebel territories and the assignment of the government is to insist through the agents of the military until every territory within that sphere comes under the reign and the rule of the federal government that is the true concept of sovereignty are we together so god's desire is not just for the kingdom of god to be known and understood but that the kingdom of heaven what we call heaven right will find expression in every life and across every territory when that happens there will be no more poverty when that happens there will be no more oppression when that happens there will be no more death when that happens there will be no more sickness when that happens there will be no more hostility hatred 
and all of these things and then heaven the heaven of heavens as revealed from scripture is a prototype of that possibility so we see heaven as the end of what earth should be like are we together it has already happened in heaven so there's no point asking can it happen a sample of it is already in existence now it's fair where there is absolute love absolute joy no lack abundance peace and so on and so forth so our assignment is through the ministry of the Holy Spirit to keep bringing pieces and portions and dimensions of that reality to our lives and our environment and the more they successfully arrive here everything about our lives begin to be a reflection of that reality there the dimension we choose to embrace is the dimension we will see are we together so when the Bible says all things are possible he speaks from the perspective of the heavens it is up to the saints here on the earth to find out the keys that can make those all things possible but simply because of our passion and our rate of search is so slow our lifetime becomes too short for us to reveal all the possibilities so we die only experiencing some but God's desire is not for us to experience some his desire is for the fullness the fullness of all that heaven is, is to find expression to a point that God will have to help us by himself and take the old earth and the whole heaven away and bring in another one are we together but as many as received him even to them that believed on his name he gave them power to become power to become power to become become what the experience not just the sons of God I told you that the word son of God is not just one begotten by a man the word son of God is an office in heaven it didn't start with the New Testament son of God is an office in heaven that's why women can also be called sons of God ladies can also be called sons of God old people can also be called sons of God it's not about gender it's not the way we perceive sonship like you know you give birth to something because we were not Jesus Christ was begotten but we were adopted right by the spirit of adoption so let's look at a few things a few keys that will help us I have been intrigued I still am by the fact that life can be absolutely predictable to those who have the keys and have an understanding of the ways of God I will keep drumming this until it enters our spirit and becomes our template in life that when you allow your life to chance listen please when you allow your life to guesswork when you allow your life to emotional suggestions you're going to live a life of failure you will be a victim of too many situations and circumstances and there are so many people who are victims of they try anything whenever they have challenges or as they live their lives they guess per day what do I do today what do I think is the smartest decision to make and most of the informations that guide our decisions are wrong are wrong they were fabricated by people who do not know God or people who do not understand and honor his ways so most of the decisions we make in our lives are primarily wrong because most of our decisions are inherited transferred from father to mother transferred from one intelligent man to another or transferred from one confused but arrogant person or system to the other there are few people who have come to a point of humility to truly understand and acknowledge that we do not know so much it is my I, I pray every time and I tell God bring me to a point in my life where I never get too confident of myself a point where I know that if the Holy Spirit and his word does not guide me I don't trust my decisions hallelujah you want a life of transgenerational relevance 
you desire a life that transcends the limitations that come with society a life that is recession proof a life that is above the vicissitudes of life a life that is above frustration a life that is above regrets a life that is above pain a life of meaning and a life of relevance do the following number one whoever desires such a life any church that desires such an experience any organization that desires such a reality the first requirement is that you must have a genuine encounter with Jesus don't trivialize what I'm saying write it and please listen a genuine encounter with Jesus not just an encounter with the Holy Spirit a genuine encounter with Jesus I have come to discover that there are many people in church there are many professing Christians who have not had a genuine encounter with Jesus you can know all the church words you can know all the, the cliches the Christian talk you can be an elder in church you can be a pastor but the question is have you had a genuine encounter with Jesus An encounter with Jesus is not just coming out for an altar call. You can act drama. People act drama where they get born again and go back and genuinely they are sinners. People act drama as pastors who lead people. They even pray in tongues in the drama, but they are not born again. An encounter with Jesus. That's why the salvation of many people looks like it's fake. Because it's not born from a genuine encounter. Let me show you a scripture. Um, Luke 24 please media help us Luke 24 we we'll look at verse 28 down to 34 I may not read every part of it but let's see how far God will help us thank you Luke 24 this was the experience of Jesus with the two men um, on their way to a city called Emmaus the Bible says and they drew nigh unto the village whither they went and he made as though he would have gone further let's read on but they constrained him saying abide with us for it is toward evening and the day is fast spent and he went to tarry with them this is Jesus now and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them listen it says he took bread and blessed it and break it and gave them 31 and their eyes were open and they what until your eyes is open you cannot know him listen stop there please it says and their eyes were open and they knew him that's not that they recognized him alone they had an encounter with him and they testified they said something 32 let's read on please and they said to one another read on did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened us up to the scripture an encounter with Jesus that something will burn upon your spirit as the word of God is coming something burns upon your heart I'm telling you many believers do not have this experience at all at all That's, that shows in how much we respect him that shows in how much we value spiritual things we sit down under different kinds of men of God. We sit down under different kinds of anointings. Different kinds of teachings. But we do not desire genuine encounters. Did not our hearts burn conviction? Did not our hearts burn conviction? Conviction. Conviction. When Peter spoke, right? Um, the encounter of Pentecost. The Bible says they, are, they were pricked to the heart. That's why you can have people sit down in church like this and a man of God is preaching. Others are crying and you see them look and immediately after the message, they get up with their conscience seared, the Bible says, with hot iron. No conviction, no willingness for transformation. Many people do not have an encounter with Jesus. Many people do not have an encounter with Jesus. Don't just desire to recite salvation prayer. Desire a genuine encounter that will show. Let me tell you, it is impossible to have an encounter with Jesus and remain the same. No. 
it has nothing to do with whether your faith is working or not it must work I guarantee you when Jesus met the woman at the Samaritan woman remember the story the Samaritan woman at the well this was a woman who had been married to over six men you know five men and the sixth person she was with was not even her husband terrible situation and Jesus by the well he began to engage her in a conversation at the end of it you know what the Bible says a solid encounter she left in other words her encounter with Jesus made what she was doing before his arrival trivial let me tell you one of the indices of an encounter is a re-evaluation re of your life if your priorities do not change you've not met Jesus no way you can't tell me your value system your way of life your desire your passion your aspiration before and after you met him is still the same no sir when you meet jesus you will shift for sure are we together many people's lives do not change no conviction their, their, their priorities are not altered at all. You were an unserious person before you met God. Now that you claim you meet him, you are still unserious. Unserious with the things of God. Unserious with the house of God. No, you've not had an encounter. And you know why I'm telling us this? If people deceive you, you can grow past their deception. But when you deceive yourself, it is true deception. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? For great is the measure of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you truly are. Lord, you are everything to me, everything, everything, Lord, you are everything to me. Sing one more time. Say the seal of the Lord. 
you must pray that the zeal of the Lord will eat you up like a cancer where everything that has to do with God everything that has to do with the house of God you give it utmost seriousness hallelujah there are people who are not serious at all about the things of God when they say pray others are praying you see them stand and they are just watching they don't care have you been filled with the Holy Spirit for one day I've been thinking about it oh the prayer department is organizing a meeting for that um, I, I, I'm busy let's as fair over every spiritual thing you've not read your Bible for one month it doesn't matter God will help me you see let me tell you something it's, it's called the spirit of complacency it's a dangerous state to be whether or not you are a believer you've got to be passionate about something in your life terrorists are passionate about something are we together unbelievers are zealous and passionate about something the zeal of the Lord must consume you brothers and sisters this lukewarm careless if it happens that's alright if it doesn't happen that's alright that kind of lifestyle will never make you someone who will be relevant transgenerationally many of our parents were like that part commitment to a harbourist part commitment to a church part commitment to education part commitment to mentorship part commitment to financial intelligence part of everything they never stood out in anything do you know it's better for you to be passionately in error at least you have standards it, it honestly is better if I see somebody and you are a chronic sinner you are a chronic drunkard it's faster for you to be born again that's why God chose Saul when he saw Saul and saw his zeal if he was determined to make sure someone died nothing would change him not even the rain he would get up and do it it's called zeal question all of us here those following me online I don't care whether you think you are born again or not do you have zeal for God don't say yes your life should show it do you have zeal for the things of God if no when will you have it the day you die the day the devil finishes with you the day you lose the job the day you cannot lift one hand again the day you wrongly mentor a generation the day life whips you and you no longer have options they that seek him early find him there is a time there is a time to seek God let me tell you you don't seek God anytime you want there is a time you seek God say Lord give me zeal for you say it Lord give me zeal for you not zeal for preaching uh -uh. not zeal for ministry not zeal for programs zeal for God I can look at your life and know the extent of your zeal for God I look at the books in your life and I know your zeal for God I see your commitment in the house of God and I know your zeal for God I see your passion to see others saved and I know your zeal for God now that's a big one because many believers the concept of soul winning has dried in our lives completely read your Bible everybody who encountered God by themselves they were too grateful to keep quiet the madman in Gadara the moment he had that encounter the Bible says he ran to the Decapolis 10 cities and brought people to Jesus the Samaritan woman she left her water there and ran to the city come see a man who has told me everything about my life and the Bible says when the men met Jesus they say we believe now not because you brought us we have seen for ourselves Saul of Tarsus when he encountered Jesus Christ in life and in death I want to ask you a very serious question and God is asking me this question 
whose life today has been changed because of your being born again it's an index to measure your sin can you turn and say somebody's life Elijah come come Elijah has come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ this guy was a drunkard but hallelujah he's changed today because of my life I was an instrument my zeal for God was so powerful that he was able to give up everything let me tell you when you are around people and they don't see a need to exalt God more than what they are currently doing your light is not shining that someone talks with you and goes back home he can't read again he can't eat again you, you, it's like an infection the person sits down you would try to pretend as if what you said didn't enter him but you've transferred something and in the night he's rolling from left to right of the bed and he gets up and kneels down and says Lord please I can't, I can't fight this war forever you see when when bringing many people to the saving knowledge of Jesus and seeing their life transformed is not your passion you will never carry the anointing if you like fast for 100 days is the Lord speaking to us tonight I'm speaking to every one of you if Jesus Christ appears right now in Koinonia and says everybody walk through this crowd and hold the hands of someone whose life has been changed because of your existence how many of us will have someone in our hand many of us will walk everywhere and the person will say no 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 I was changed you saw me in my situation and you left me it was someone else that came to change me I was your neighbor for three years you saw me and you left me by the mercy of God someone else God used someone else I want you in your mind hold the hands of someone whose life is a testament of your sin for God and then you will see why many people's prayers are not answered you will see why many people's passion for anointing and power and crowd are we together whose life who got filled with the Holy Spirit because you are passionate about God who stopped smoking and drinking because you came to know the Lord whose life whose confused destiny was brought back in order because of your sin please hear me if you are here and you are not doing anything for the kingdom I want you to know that God is not happy with you don't allow anybody to deceive you and say you are all right you are not all right there is a serious problem you may not be going to hell but there is no sin in your heart those whose impact will be transgenerational are those who God is more than church to them God is more than koinonia to them God is more than ministry there are many pastors who don't have zeal for God they are only preaching because they were transferred to that branch and I mean on Sunday you must preach on Friday you must speak you must come for koinonia you must speak to people there is a routine that you organize 21 days fasting so you are part of it you are in the worship team and you must do the rehearsals if you don't come what do you tell your head of department so I am there are we together you are a worker in the house of God just because they know you I'm holding the camera just because I have to do it no let me tell you zeal creates passion in you that you even have to pray and say ah let them not say I'm overdoing this passion you are in the worship team every time you are going for rehearsal there is joy in your heart you are not dragging yourself and say today again no your zeal has died sins don't let my love grow cold I'm crying out light the fire again I need your discipline I'm crying out light the fire again don't let my love grow cold I'm crying out light the fire again I need your discipline I'm crying out light the fire again you were so zealous they used to call you pastor 
now they call you bros do you know why something happened your your backsliding left you and it became so obvious that the people now felt they are even insulting you calling you there was a name they called you which was a testament of your zeal now everything they are doing you are doing too so they don't see the difference again so they can as well just call you bros when they wanted to gossip and you entered not because you were judging anybody there was your passion for God was so contagious but now as soon as they are saying once you enter they say sit down thank God this guy has completed the equation he will bring another side of the story look let me tell you something eh? if you want to be serious with God just set your face like a flint and go for it if you want to play games with God then at least be bad and go to hell let it be that you were not serious and you went to hell but that you are one leg in one leg out acting as though you love God acting as though you are not serious there are many ladies who are not serious with God many sisters are not serious with God they are serious with marriage they are serious with relationship huh? they are serious with beauty nothing is wrong with all those things but God there are many parents in fact parents own I say it with, with due respect many of our parents are not serious with God especially the fathers the mothers are serious with God pain has brought them to God but many fathers are dead spiritually and the family is suffering because of their lack of zeal you pray they get up and say keep quiet why are you disturbing us I have headache please whereas that's the solution to the headache they stop you are we together now, how many parents encourage young people who are serious with God stop all this your children thing we started before you were born but then they have another younger brother who jumps the fence and they say talk God is helping us at least he's going to school you see you see our rating you see our rating seal for God how many homes as a home are passionate about God how many families have contributed to the advancement of the kingdom when was the last time many families came together to pray I, I know when the last time was when there was trouble severe trouble that could threaten the father then we would do fire brigade disturbances and when there is peace we announce everybody should go devotionals morning devotion in many families have died completely completely everybody now does his own you get up if you're a Pentecostal you go outside you go and shout near the fence if you are if you are you are you are an orthodox or whatever you are you just open whatever book you read and sleep while you are reading it and mock yourself no zeal are we together we do everything we want to do with our time and our life then the balance of it is what we give God say God you better be grateful I'm giving you this I mean I'm getting busier by the day anything that will take God's place in my life I don't care whether it is fame whether it is money may it not just come to may, may it be far from me in the name of Jesus Christ I want you to check your life because you see love hear me love is like energy it can never be created nor destroyed if I used to love you and I no longer love you I transferred it somewhere for sure if I used to love you and I no longer love you I transferred it somewhere I used to love him now I don't love him that space cannot be empty so the question is what occupied it I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart Lord, I will bow. Lord, I will bow to you. To no other God but you. Lord. Listen, 
I'm speaking specifically right now by the Spirit to those who were serious with God before. If nobody has told you it's a problem, backsliding is a very bad thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a terrible thing to at one time in your life be serious. Where did you lead the prayers? The nights when you called upon His name. Where did you keep the fasting? Who preached you into thinking it was not important? What relationship make God look no, like nonsense in your life? Who asked you out and asked God out of your life? What job came into your life and removed everything God out of your life? Take what I'm saying seriously. Where did you keep the visions you used to see? You solved the problems in people's lives because of how serious and fiery your spirit was. But right now, everything passes and there is no eye to see again. And you keep moving around. There are many pastors who need to go back for a retreat. They are still standing, moving around as usual. But we know the wine has finished. There's nothing there again. The zeal of the Lord. To the point that many of us are even ashamed now. Huh? You are ashamed now. The only place you are confident about God is Koinonia. How after that you are ashamed because God has looked like nonsense to you. Anti-technology, anti-civilization, anti-socialization. That's your understanding of who God is. Did our hearts not burn within us as He opened the scripture? Hallelujah. Many fathers have left God sins sees looking for money left God sees do you know the number of Christians that patronize herbalists you think if the herbalists were not patronized they would go and look for something else they are in business alive and strong patronized by Christians look let me tell you you know what I'm saying is not a lie you know what I'm saying is not a lie Look, we must get back to that place where God is all and in all. Where God is not just the most important thing. There are four keys I'm giving you tonight. This is just number one. But I must burn it in. There are backsliders that need to run to God. It's not an insult. It's not an insult. Don't allow people keep telling you you are okay. You know when you are not okay. You know when you are not okay. Everything is going haywire in your life. It's a message. It's a message. Don't wait till you are destroyed. Your joy has left you. Your peace has left you. Impact has left you. Passion has left you. The gifts have dried from your life. How can you say nothing is wrong? How can you fool yourself into thinking nothing is wrong? take an altar call I'm going to take an altar call two fiery altar calls one you need Jesus I'm not giving you any long story you've heard everything I've said you desperately need Jesus two you need genuine restoration you're saying please don't pretend it and, and I'm, I, I don't mean that you just need to step up you were one serious with God for whatever reason sincerely you know between you and God you need a personal revival to come back please I will count one to five nobody is closing their eyes wherever you are inside or outside I want you to stand up and come to the front right now one run like there's fire on the mountain I need revival I can't tell a lie Lord something is wrong with my life I will lay down my idols those of you who are sitting be praying don't be watching who is coming it's none of your business some of you sitting are supposed to be outside so don't sit down watching who is coming and who is not coming I'm coming back to the heart of worship. 
when it's all about you please pray all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for the thing I made it when it's all about you it's all about you Jesus it's all about you sing it with me it's all about you it's all about you Lord it's all about you Jesus yeah. All about you. All about you, Jesus. All about you. All about you. All about you. All about you. All about you, Jesus. All about you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All of you who are out. I like you to cry renew my passion oh God I don't know where it went to but it must return this night renew my passion renew my fire Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. There is nothing I desire compared to you. She na 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 ne ne mo so na 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 de. She ne mo so na na de na na. More precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Nothing I desire compared to you. Lord, there is nothing I desire. There is no one I desire. There is no one I desire. There is no one. I desire Make sure you are praying There is no place I desire There is no place I desire Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life. Please pray in one minute, all of you in front. Lord, affect my life. Change me. Take away that heart of stone. Replace it with a heart of flesh. Lord, let me stop playing games with you and mean peace.
business i want to live a life of impact i cannot wait i cannot wait here is my life i want to live i want to live serving my fellow man doing the will of god here is my life here is my life here is my life here is my life i bring it back to the altar take it oh god here is my life i bring my life here is my life here is my life here is my time here is my time I give you my time hallelujah all of you who are out I want to pray for you you have my life you have my life you have my life In Jesus name in the name of Jesus all of you who are standing outside here whether you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time or you are rededicating your life I'd like you to say it passionately as though you are talking to a real person standing close to you say Lord Jesus restore my zeal restore my fire restore my passion I declare this night take your place take your place in my life I mean business with you from today everything that has taken your place in my life regardless of what it is I pray that you rise above it my heart belongs to you my mind belongs to you my body belongs to you take it use it for your glory from today every lifestyle every association that does not please you I part ways with them forever in the name of Jesus I honor you for this decision God bless you please rise up and go back to your seat very quickly celebrate them and thank the Lord thank you hallelujah hallelujah for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. Continue. So that's the first key to a life of transgenerational relevance. To a life that will make God vow to defend you a life of passion a life of zeal a life that has truly met God number two the second key you need to rise above the tides and the vicissitudes of life is mental transformation the second key you need the power of a renewed mind 
someone is under the anointing, you can just carry them to the back. Paradigm shifts. Change of mindsets. Ideologies altered. Shifted for good. There is so much that God wants to do in and through our lives. But our paradigms, listen to me please. Our mindsets, our ideologies limit him again and again. Most believers are taught as powerful as this altar call was. It is not all there is to your salvation. There are different dimensions and facets of our salvation. And the consummation of your salvation is the renewal of your mind. First Peter chapter 1 verse 9 please. If we can have it in the amplified version. Please hurry up. First Peter chapter 1 verse 9. Shabakato sapratakata. First Peter chapter 1. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and run some captivity. Can you help us, media? Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and run some captivity. I'd like us to read it together. It's projected. One to read. Uh huh. You receive the result, the outcome, the consummation of your faith, the salvation of your souls. It says, receiving the end of your faith, King James says, even the salvation of your soul. The salvation of your soul is the renewal of your mind. When your mind has experientially been brought under the lordship of both the person and the philosophies of Jesus is the culmination of your salvation. At that point, you experientially begin to walk in the benefits and the blessings of salvation. Because the Bible tells us that salvation is a well. There are wells, not just a well. He said, for with joy shall you draw out of the wells, the wells, the wells divine health a life of impact a life of prosperity all in that word soteria it's an unencompassing word it's not just translation from darkness to light the experience of the fullness of the life of God in all its dimensions and the Bible says for that to happen the consummation of it is the salvation of your soul the renewal of your mind paradigms and I, I was teaching I think it was yesterday in the school of ministry and I was teaching the students and I taught them that we are programmed in two ways the first programming is called genetic programming genetic programming comes from father to son in sin did my mother bear me and so on and so forth so we we receive traits spiritually by inheritance but the second and more dangerous of the programming is environment it's called environmental programming say environmental programming we grew up in different regions of the world different regions of nigeria under different kinds of parenting under different kinds of exposure with different kinds of experiences are we together and so our concepts our perspectives our ideologies about God ideologies about marriage ideologies about education ideologies about greatness ideologies about a good life ideologies about you name it diverse ideologies influenced by our environment culture our levels of exposure our failures of the past have all environmentally programmed us now when you come to God watch this when you got, when you got born again your mind did not change all of a sudden are we together there needs to be a system of progressive transformation 
which is dependent on the allowance that you give the Holy Spirit through the world. It's not by force. You can choose to stop and say, Lord, I peg myself at this level. Thank you for all you've done for me, but I cannot continue with you. You are not going to hell, but you sure will not do much for the kingdom. And the quality of your life will be greatly affected. Are we together? There are two dimensions to our walk with God. There is an encounter with his presence and his person. That's the first dimension to our walk with God. An encounter with his presence and his person. The fruit of that dimension is um, conformity to the image of the Christ. So when you have an encounter with the person of Christ, you have an encounter with the presence of Christ, you are conformed to the image of Christ and you rise in character. The fruit of the Spirit is at work in you. Your character becomes Christ-like. That's the benefit of an encounter with the person. But an encounter with the person Christ will not automatically change your destiny and the quality of your life. You must encounter the principles of Christ. You must encounter the mysteries of the kingdom. You must encounter the ideologies and the philosophies of Christ. It's not enough to have an encounter with the person Christ. You must encounter his ideologies, his philosophies, his thinking, his paradigm. You must be willing to exalt the word of God above culture, above your ideologies, above your experience. At that point, the principles of the kingdom you have now embraced and are practicing begin to bring new results in your life everybody say new results yeah you are not going to get a new result as far as the quality of your life is concerned with an old ideology the bible puts it beautifully it says no man puts new wine correct in an old wine skin no you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin new wine must be put in a new wine skin so your own assignment is to present a new wine skin and God's assignment is to pour the new wine. Let me tell you how God makes the old wine obsolete. He pours small new wine in the old wine. Because the Bible says when new wine is poured in an old wine skin, it will tear it. So God introduces something new to your old mindset. And it rattles your philosophy. Making your beliefs obsolete. And you want something new. And that's where true transformation begins. Say change my mind oh God say change my mindset I don't want to begin to tell you how limited our lives can be when we do not sustain a paradigm that is consistent with the word of God and by word of God I mean God's ways of doing things the principles of the kingdom not just scriptures your mindset must come in perfect alignment to God's idea I'll give you an instance as bad and sad as the economy is and I sympathize, you know, I was sympathetic to it by responsible people. So we don't ignore the reality of what is happening in our society. How be it? In God's system, there is a provision. Say there is a provision. There is a provision for a possibility to experience abundance even in the midst of famine. Now it's up to you to work with the mindset that has been proposed as far as school economic theories government policies are concerned or you can switch and choose to adopt the ideology of the kingdom and then you will see the results divine health there is no such thing as divine health in the physical world divine health is only in Christ there is no such thing as that you are expected to be sick once and again all the time every time without exception are we together now, when you begin to adopt the mind of Christ, you now find out that there is a possibility in Christ and there is a provision where a man can rise and that your body can be immune to communicable diseases and all kinds of things that destroy people. A possibility based on another ideology. Where you are today, is a reflection of how much space you have given God in your mind. I've taught us here again and I'll repeat it that mindsets are doorways. Mindsets are not like doorways. They are literally 
doorways they authorize the entrance of demon spirits to your life and they authorize the entrance of the Holy Spirit to your life the devil can have limited or almost no access to you if your mindset does not allow him even witchcraft curses and all of these things that have plagued the lives of men these courses have gotten unlimited access through certain mental obstructions like fear, the planting of fear, bad ideas that ignites the law of expectation. Are we together? The greater part of deliverance is not casting out the devil that is responsible for that operation. The greater part of, of deliverance is the transformation of your mindset. So your mindset changes so that it does not authorize that operation to find expression again. Because when a spirit leaves, the Bible says it will still come back and check. It still calls that place my house. Are we together? Transformation of our minds. In Psalm 78 verse 41, popular scripture here, the Bible says they limited the Holy One. They limited the Holy One. It was the encounter of those in the nation of, uh, of the, um, the Israelites. Their sojourn out of Egypt. Right? And the psalmist by the Spirit was given a few details there. And he said they limited the Holy One. They limited the Holy One. Psalm 78 verse 41. They limited the Holy One. Right? They said, can God make a wilderness? How many times have we limited God with our mindsets and our understandings? Proverbs 23 verse 7. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. He leads me and guides me to the city of the He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of Papa. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Please sit down. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were standing. Let's read the A part. Just the A part. One to read. For as he thinketh in his heart. So, this is scripture. The word heart in many translations is interchange heart mind for as he thinketh in his heart it didn't say so he will be so he already is as he thinketh in his heart your reality a messless expression of your ideology listen let me tell you an uncomfortable truth the quality of your life right now in all its ramifications with no exception the quality of your life and my life right now is a messless reflection of our ideologies what we have been able to understand and what we have been able to authorize this is an uncomfortable truth it will take a lot of meekness to admit this what we have been able to understand and what we have been able to authorize meaning if we can understand more and we can authorize more of the possibilities of God to find expression we will rise from where we are to another dimension and another quality of life. Say amen. Koinonia is where it is right now because of the limitation of our mindset. Are we together? Where God has brought us now by grace is dependent on our mindset and our understanding. And where we need to rise to, we have not risen there already because something about our paradigm is limiting us. It could be a paradigm in leadership. It could be a paradigm in in organization it could be a paradigm in the anointing it could be an understanding there is something as a person and as a ministry that's not yet gotten to that holds the key to our next dimension if we do not get it we remain here forever if we get it then we rise right Paul the apostle said I went up by revelation you don't go up by desire I went up by revelation what have you seen what do you know? What has changed about your perspective that has improved the quality of your life? There are many well-meaning but nonsense ideologies we carry around 
one of the ideologies is the concept of the sovereign will of God. We just believe that everything that happens in our life is the sovereign will of God. How can they allow Sharia? A very stupid mindset that has been responsible for the pain of many people. So we sit down and we are irresponsible as far as our participation in the outcome of the events of our lives are. And we justify ourselves and say, God planned it, that's why I'm poor. God planned it, that's why I'm not happy. No, sir. The will of God is very clear in his word. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Jeremiah 29, 11, saith the Lord. They are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. God can take advantage of a situation and turn it for good for we know that all things although not created that way but they can work together for good. It's a system in God's mercy that makes everything to eventually work for good. But that doesn't mean it cost it. Are we together? The simple paradigm this change of mindset that my success and your success does not entirely rest on God and not entirely on me that there is a partnership can I use you again please there is a partnership between God and Joshua Selman for the outcome of his life if koinonia must rise it's not just God alone it's not just Joshua Selman alone there must be a partnership there is a role that is exclusive to the office of God I cannot do it but there is a part God will not do for me if you must succeed in your life in your marriage there is a role as a sister a husband will not just come because God said male and female he created them you have a role to play in being virtuous you have a role to play in being prepared submissive with a meek and a quiet spirit are we together and then God has a role to play in convicting the brother and bringing him into your life you want to become an exceptional CEO you want to become a very great person you have a role to play to have a teachable heart and the humility to be mentored and to be shown the pathway that leads to a great life God's own is to back up and reward your humility with the required information and access to the right people every outcome in your life including the prayer of salvation as free as it looks you have to participate this is a revelation many people in the body do not know so they leave everything to God father I have five children you gave them to me I, I release them back to you if you don't pay their school fees that's your business now that looks spiritual I lift it up There is a book in a library how to come out of financial struggles you look at it and pass and go to a restaurant that's the answer to your prayer you ignore it there is free to air where a man of God like Samadhemi is preaching from his years of labor and telling you there is a reason why your life is where it is you just laugh and say all these men you change the channel you have demonstrated your unwillingness to experience that dimension of God Are we together? There is always a part I have to play. Even in the arrival of the anointing in my life, if the anointing just arrived anyhow, everybody will have it. The anointing does not just land like a plane anywhere. Planes don't land anywhere. They have designated places. Well prepared intentionally for their landing. If a plane lands in a forest, what do you call it? Plane crash. You don't call it plane landing. Plane crash because it landed in a not designated place. Let me tell you, the anointing of the spirit is holy and precious. It will not just land on any head like that. That head must be prepared for the anointing to come. A body has now prepared. Not a body did you make available. You prepared it. Esther prepared herself to meet the king. The Bible says that Dothan uh, um, um, prospered because he prepared his way before the Lord. Are you preparing your way to be successful? Or are you hoping that you will be successful? Listen up. There are many of our loved ones who are not preparing for anything, yet they believe in their hearts that they will be successful. Ask them what they are doing 
ask many pastors what are you doing for an extraordinary ministry and they tell you I'm waiting on God wonderful you finish the fast what did God tell you to do there is always something to do to get a desired outcome there is always something to do to get a desired outcome God will always commit a responsibility to you Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day right that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you it will not happen by default hear me brothers and sisters there is the labor dimension of faith there is the labor dimension of faith there is a labor dimension of faith it's not free it's not a gift so lazy people have no place in the realms of greatness completely there is no provision for that say a renewed mind the question I want to ask you very quickly this night is what are you doing to renew your mind what show me the spiritual investments show me the intellectual investments you are making now that you have acknowledged that something about your paradigm is responsible for the quality of your life even if you don't have any money in your hand show me what you are doing I don't mean what business show me the materials you are accessing let me see the voices that you are submitting to for mentorship and, and, and transformation Nigeria, everybody's a guy of himself. Are we together? Everybody is the boss of himself. Regardless of how ignorant we are, we claim we are the gods of ourselves. We know everything. We live in a world all by ourselves. That's the recipe for failure. As bad as this economy is, there are people, this is about the best year for them so far without exaggeration in every white this is the year their wives gave birth this is the year they became millionaires this is the the year god shamed their enemies i mean they've had they, they, it's been a bed of roses from january till now to a point that they are even afraid to testify it because people would think they are lying yet for others this is the worst year they can't wait for december In Egypt, there was utter darkness. Children were dying. In Goshen, there was life. There was light. There was rejoicing. It's up to you to turn your life to Egypt or Goshen. You turn it by light. A paradigm shift. The Bible says, ask for the ancient parts. Don't guess. Ask for it. It's been found already. There are keys that are responsible for abundance. The key is not business. There are keys responsible for their abundance. There are keys responsible for joy. Joy. There are keys that can take you out of inferiority. Complex. There are keys that can help you rise above failure. There are keys that can motivate you through times of pain. There are paradigms. There are understandings. Please hear me. Hear me in the name of Jesus Christ. Invest in changing your mind. Don't invest in dumping information in your mind. Make sure the information are worth um, committing yourself to. The light you have must be bright enough to turn your night to morning. It's not enough to have light. Is it bright enough? Stars shine in the night. But you still call it night. But when the sun comes, night turns to day. The light you have, is it bright enough to make your night become morning? Because for as long as it is night, weeping endures. Are we together? I am obsessed with knowing where I am missing it in life. My heart is passionate. I pursue wisdom. I pursue wisdom like a jewel that is missing. There is no price that is too much to pursue uncommon mentorship, to pursue wisdom. I listen to people, I listen to ministers whose lives have produced the results that I desire with all humility. That's why I respect the Bible. I don't just read it. I don't just believe it. I truly respect it because this is a compendium of God's wisdom. 
any man who walks with the light that is written here will change his life this is what changed my life so far how could I ignore it I don't read it to get a message I don't read it to cry so that I can speak well they are life to those who find them and help to their flesh please pay attention on developing your mind Jordan bookstore is here Jordan is here seated buy the truth and sell it not look for the areas in your life where the devil is singing choruses and marching on him that and find relevant materials by the grace of God we have taught different messages across different places if the economy is whipping you financial dominion part one to four the wealthy place right activating seasons of greatness activating breakthrough the ministry of destiny help us extraordinary accomplishment the cost sit down with these teachings and listen to them and stand up with both the knowledge and the impartation and change your life he says they that sat in darkness have seen a great light it was a lamentation in left hand he said they that sat in darkness have seen a great light you don't rise because of desire until your light comes you will never rise say amen the bible tells us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds to be transformed by the renewing of our minds i'd like you to pray very quickly in one minute and say father every mindset that has limited my life whether it came from culture whether it came from my upbringing every mindset reveal it to me and i'm willing to drop it go ahead and pray in one minute very quickly every mindset that is keeping me poor no matter what i do money doesn't come to me every mindset that keeps me limited it looks like i'm a failure in everything in relationships i'm a failure every mindset that makes good things leave me please change my mindset it may not be my fault i inherited it is what my father taught me is what my mother taught me is what my culture taught me people in my family and my lineage that's what they believe but lord i submit to you lift me beyond culture you raise me up so i can stand on mountains you raise me up to walk on stormy sea I am strong when I am on your shoulder you raise me up I went up by revelation listen sit down please your mindset must change years ago the Lord spoke to me and told me that I was posting mindsets that came sincerely but were responsible for the limitation in my life and because you see let me tell you something by God's grace and by the privilege of God's mercies I've always been a very intelligent person all through my life it's been like that God's grace on my life and intelligent people are arrogant people it's very difficult for them to admit there is something more that they do not know are we together and so when God brought me to a point I had to break my pride and say look young man you grew up in a family under a father and a mother under a culture under a government under a system and your life is inevitably a reflection of their highest level of mental transformation and so their limitation has now become your limitation the heights they got to is where you are now and if you don't know more you will remain there forever you want to rise higher it's not just my duty alone you must get new information and I started sitting down under the mentorship of great men like Bishop David Oyedeko, great men like Dr. Miles Munro, Dr. Mike Bodok. I wanted to change my mind. I was humble and I was intentional about it. The things I read stung my ego. Some of their teachings directly insulted me. But I had to humble myself and say, look, I needed this. I 
wanted the anointing of the spirit in my life i met a lot of people who were not anointed and they told me what they felt was the formula i tried it it didn't work and i knew that that was why they were not anointed so i started looking for those who were truly anointed like benny Hinn, and i found the secrets love everybody but don't follow everybody please be very unapologetic about not following people who do not have results it doesn't mean you castigate people it doesn't mean you criticize people I have no loyalty for anybody who doesn't have results you can teach me how to live well a social life how to be a kind person but when it comes to the areas I want results I find people who have exceptional results that are a bar and a standard that's why I love Jesus his life inspires me when I read about Jesus I'm amazed at how invincible he was who you are following who you have allowed access to your mind is shaping the results of your life that's why every pastor must know that every member that sits down under your anointing and under your grace is a trust from God they bring their minds and they bring their experiences in submission two hours three hours every week for the rest of their lives you better don't give them trash you've got to give them something that will grant them access to rise that's why every man of God must not only be anointed, you must be fast. Go for information and bring time-tested principles that can help the people of God. They will thank you, they will market you, they will bless God and they will pray for you. But you teach men junk that destroys their life, they will hate you, they will curse you and they will make sure they participate in the downfall of your life and your ministry. Number three, time is gone. The third key you need to rise above the vicissitudes of life. The third key you need to live a life of transgenerational relevance and impact. The third key is the discovery and the development of yourself and your abilities. Oh, I could spend the whole night teaching on this. The discovery, write it down. It's not as simple as you think it is. The discovery and the development of yourself first your intrinsic value not just what you offer yourself the discovery and the development of yourself and your abilities in one word value everybody say value those who are enjoying right now regardless of the economic recession those who are enjoying right now regardless of government policies are those who have proven themselves to be men and women of value men and women of value value is a description of the solutions you possess that can change the life of a person and a territory value is a description of the abilities you have that can prefer pragmatic practical solution to the problems of mankind I was teaching we're on a series the last series in the school of ministry and his finance and i was teaching the school of ministry and i was challenging them yesterday and telling them that the reason why many people are poor is not because of witches and wizards they are poor because they do not have any value in exchange for the rewards they desire they want rewards without value are we together someone can look at this ministry and see how God has helped us financially and with the level he has helped us and think how can young people be this blessed it's not about being young it's about being valuable are we together when a woman who has been buried for 10 years comes and in two months she takes her child that's result say result shout it again that's exactly what you need to prosper results not stories creation is not waiting for the explanation of the sons of God they are waiting for the manifestation that your life becomes an unending stream of results for people if Christianity didn't have results you will not be part of it I guarantee you salvation is a result Jesus said it he did it we are witnesses and participants so we worship him are we together anybody who cannot produce results in our economy today is the person who will beg forever all kinds of results 
a pastor who does not stay with God to have dramatic supernatural results. I don't mean falling down and rising up. Results of salvation, results of changed lives, results of the supernatural at work in the lives of people. No results, no value, no reward. It's as simple as that. The discovery and the development of your giftings, of your ability, is the key to your exit from a life of mediocrity. Listen to my message, Activating Seasons of Greatness. I teach there that the secret of greatness is favor, but that favor does not happen on its own. Favor is dependent on many factors. The gift of a man, Proverbs 18, 16. The gift of a man. And I always add, the gift that is developed and deployed, not discovered. Crude oil that is discovered does not bring money. When it is refined, then it can bring you resources. There are many of us who are sitting on gold mines and yet languishing in poverty and pain. There are families with potentials to rise above certain realms of mediocrity, spiritually and otherwise. But the inability to discover and develop our giftings, this is a gift. It has earned people money. Don Muen has blessed the world with it. He's also eating with it. This thing I'm doing, proffering supernatural solutions, has brought wealth to people and has blessed others in ways that are beyond imagination. Listen, you must make up your mind that you are going to be a man or a woman of extreme value. Extreme value. Make sure you don't just write value. Extreme value. Intellectually, spiritually, extreme value. You must be a master at something that is in demand. And people will veto your background. They will veto your limitations and they will bless you and call it a privilege. Are you valuable? Tell me what about your life will make me desire you. Tell me what about your life will make me pay you and not feel the pain. I told you the true measure of your value is when no amount given to you for your value becomes too much. When people can give you 10 million and still call it a privilege, you are extremely valuable. No man is indispensable, but there are people who are very difficult to replace. May you be such a person. In the name of Jesus, I made up my mind that I will be extremely valuable as a man of God, extremely valuable as a leader. And the key is not to make noise, the key is not to snap pictures and go on Facebook, snap near Lamborghini. The key is not to go around and, and carry all kinds of shirts. Huh? Angela Galasso and wear Tom Ford and say, so, oh, these are designers, I'm wearing it. That's not the key to be valuable. The key to be valuable is to sit down, invest in yourself, sharpen your gifts. Kabaratakaya. As a man of God, that when you hold the mic and you teach the word of God, as you minister, one hour under your anointing, somebody is waiting with an envelope to sow and he says, sir, grant me the privilege to tap into this grace. Jesus prepared for 33 years. For 30 years, he made himself extremely valuable. We've not reco recovered from the honor we accrue to him today. Question, are you valuable? In your place of work, are you valuable? Right now, they are downsizing people. If they downsize you, you are not valuable. It's as simple as that. Are you rising to a place of value? I told you there's no such thing as learned. That, that is our, our, our civilization has made that concept extinct. You are either learning or you are unlearned. There's no such thing as unlearned. Progressive growth. Progressive development. And David served his generation. Pastors, are you preparing to serve your generation? Business people, are you preparing to serve your generation? If you have a restaurant and um, in this day and age your food is still smelling smoke you are not serving your generation you are serving a generation that does not need your service are we together if you are a professional typist you are not serving your generation the generation that needed you has gone 
are we together are you getting what I'm saying you are a tailor are you serving your generation don't say people are not coming why should I come can you serve me are we together you are fixing phones and I bring a phone of 200,000 and you look at me and say hey, sorry sir this is not the type we fix I will not come again because what you said is that I have pegged myself I have refused to develop myself to be able to provide services at that level are we together yeah the minimum standard in the world is excellence you must prepare to serve your generation I preach in all kinds of places and I can tell you it's not just preaching by the anointing alone you must understand the systems and the environment and the protocol of where you are going to by the truth please I like you to challenge yourself and say I must be valuable say it stop envying people stop getting angry stop wishing rise up and be valuable being valuable may require you taking extra courses and trainings some of us what you want to be valuable about may require you going to school again to further some of you being valuable will require you sitting with certain levels of books some of you it will require you being a protege to a mentor directly over a season to learn whatever price it takes to have capacity to serve your generation go for it are we together now yes be valuable it's not what you are doing it's how you are doing it develop your gifts develop your gifts in this day and age you want to be a worshiper you come and hold the mic and you are chewing your mouth you are talking rubbish people don't have there are too many options too many options as a keyboardist you can only play two or three keys you are not a keyboardist you are you are you are a freelance um, explorer of your hobbies anything worth doing is worth doing extremely well it was our fathers who says worth doing well now it's not worth doing well it's worth doing extremely hear what I'm saying you claim you're a consultant I give you a material to prepare for me arrange it intelligently and you write nonsense your grammatic construction rubbish right your the points your persuasions are nonsense all your facts are outdated will I come to you again will I come to your institute again no sir even if you are my brother call it David school of research I'm not coming there again call it whatever you want to call it we must strive for excellence we must strive for mastery the Bible says and if a man desires mastery yet is he not crowned until he strives lawfully there are rules he says meditate upon these things give yourself wholly to them that your profiting will appear unto all we've taken time we're going to pray but I want you to get this. You must get it. You must get this. You must get this. Proverbs 22 verse 29. Proverbs 22 verse 29. Seest thou a man diligent? Seest thou a man flawless? Seest thou a man creative? Seest thou a man exceptional? In whatever it is that he does, there is an assurance that he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. The reason why many people are standing before mean men including pastors the reason why they may never invite you to speak in a meeting or a conference somewhere is you have not proven to have the ability you may have the anointing but you've not worked on your communication skills you stand on stage and twist your tongue nobody is hearing what you are saying you preach like you are talking to yourself you're not clear your points are not objective enough they are not persuasive enough you may be anointed but you may never go far when you are talking to your villagers they will hear you when you are talking to the world they won't hear you so if you want to remain in your village you act like them you think like them you talk like them when you want to rise you become world class you reinvent yourself nobody was born with anything you can re-engineer yourself are we together challenge yourself 
you are a tailor all your customers have all the clothes they need go and reinvent yourself go back for a three months training go go somewhere meet someone who has been trained in uk or in italy meet someone who has worked with a designer company don't work with mediocre you will be like them and don't let anybody preach you into thinking all that is required for greatness is just prayer you need to reinvent yourself it's a lie that many people have carried for a very long time and they are paying for it right now it takes more than prayer you must prepare yourself Nehemiah on one hand held the sword on another hand he was building the fence I Daniel understood by books the Bible says buy the truth and sell it not men will not give you free money like that the days of free lunch are over until you show what value you have that merits being a millionaire everybody just jumps I'm a millionaire Ooh, glory we keep mocking ourselves you don't become a millionaire by jumping you offer the value that will compel millions coming to you God can give you access it's up to you to take advantage of the access so I go back working on myself I'm not satisfied with the level of value that I'm communicating now I'm telling you the level of anointing that I desire to walk in I've not even come near it I've not scratched the surface to it the level of grace and the, the dimension in the spirit that I trust to be operating in you get to a dimension where everybody who comes to you knows his life is changed his own sacrifice is just to see you that is such a realm when you get to that realm no witch I guarantee you no wizard even if the wizard comes for service he will be part of those who will bless you at that level you don't pray for needs again you just pray that the needs don't kill you are you ready to reinvent yourself are you ready to sit down don't run around with albums I want to produce album the producer who is producing doesn't know what he's doing you the singer doesn't know what you don't know any rules about music you want to produce your album because you are hoping the members in your church will buy it I don't listen to a song just because it's spiritual I have ears physical ears I listen to a song that is musically sound well composed intelligently directed and spiritually presented that's the kind of thing to listen to are we together you serve restaurants say the most important thing is the balance diet no i eat emotionally before physically i need to eat with my mind my eyes my mouth all of them must participate in the food if it's not presentable carry your food away i will not buy it i'm a member of koinonia I, I bless god for you i will keep blessing you every friday but i'm not going to come to your restaurant as simple as that I bring you clothes as a tailor you sew what you want to sew put pockets anywhere put the design anywhere and waste materials anyhow I'm not coming again very simple please reinvent yourself turn and prophesy to somebody say be valuable be valuable our time is up we're going to pray but be valuable go for knowledge don't snore your destiny almost every information you need to rise is free you just need to have the discernment to access it it's free but it's not cheap it's free but it's not cheap i don't like lazy people truly truly i resent an attitude of laziness people who are complacent with where they are no sir you should rise to a position where no devil and no culture as far as I'm concerned, Koinonia has not risen to one-tenth of the level of excellence we should be. All what we are doing compared to where we are going is rubbish, complete rubbish. It's just that we will permit this just because we are still preparing for that level. This, this is complete nonsense. No, this, this does not look like the blueprint. Are you challenging yourself to that level? Miracle services. This, this miracle service. This one is, this, this is Tuesday prayer band. In fact, this is not even to the prayer. This is the part. You need meeting. By the time we truly start miracle service in Koinonia, you will know it's a miracle service. That's what we should do. Refuse to be satisfied. Where somebody comes for Koinonia, 
on a wheelchair and just as he crosses that place just crossing that place he stands up the service has not started and then nobody shouts because we see it all the time now that's a level that's a dimension where every woman who delays doesn't give birth to a child gives birth to at least twins minimum restoration plus breakthrough in one equation now that's the result. You carry a dead body and just put him close to any car, anybody. The security man's gone, just touches the child and he comes back to life. It's a level. We can rise to that level. In your joke, you are joking, yet it's bringing the anointing. Because of how much you are infused with the anointing. The anointing sent to you. So believe his prophets. Are we together? There were many widows in Zarephath. Elijah was looking for just one. Habba prophet. What of other women? I love them. I can pray. I can intercede. May God bless you. Do A, B, and C. But I'm looking for a woman of Zarephath. Where is she? Finally, you find her. And his clear she's not even ready for you. She's doing something else. The prophet would have been angry to say, I spent time to come here. You don't even know what you are missing. I'm on my way going. But because he was sent, he had to stay. His assignment was to change her life. When you find the anointing and the prophet that God has sent over your life and your situation, let me tell you, you will watch that anointing rubbish your situation in it as if Satan does not exist. It's, it's not just this is where we have a little challenge with many believers who just say the most important thing is God yes you are right but you are wrong the most anointing is anointing what is there what is so special about this man of God this is what I'm teaching you now people are sent to people even the word of God is sent he sent his word like a messenger meaning until that word is sent you can stay there but when the word comes, like a messenger, angel Gabriel left other believers around earth and was directed to one person, Daniel. All that fight for 21 days in the heavenlies. He would have been angry to say, I'm going to someone else. Mm -mm. He said, Daniel, I am come to give you understanding. Are you the only one? I am come to give you understanding. Jesus is appearing by the road. Saul is on his way to Damascus. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says there were other people with Saul. God would have been fair enough to at least give them something. And then he isolates one person and discusses with the person. The rest just fall down and don't even know what threw them down. They just got up to clean themselves and say, Kai, now wow, what is all this one now? Whereas one person has that encounter. sent 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 the word that changes my life sent i have had encounters with sent words and sent prophets and my god did my life change tonight let me tell you if you can believe this he said believe his prophets i know you are a businessman i know you are educated I know you are smart, but there are many equations in this life that cannot be solved with pen and paper. They are solved from the realm of the spirit. It's only the result you receive here. Are we together now? Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Write this down, please. His prophet here is the vessel sent from him to you. You must first acknowledge that this vessel is sent from God to you. And one of the ways that you can help yourself to believe the prophet God has sent to you is investigate the dealings of God with that man. Don't just believe for nothing. You have a right to investigate the dealings of God with that man. What is so special about this man? Why should I believe him? 
why should I take the word that he's bringing seriously? Every true prophet of God has a track record of his dealings with God. Investigate the dealings of God. Study the track records of his results. I think it's unfair if you just yoke people to believe you just like that. No. Give them room to study the track records of your result and find out whether the results are worth your believing. How do you believe his prophets? Open up your spirit to receive both his grace and his instructions. Don't just receive the grace alone instructions many times believers miss it because we miss instructions very subtle instructions sometimes very ego stinging instructions like you were seated here now and then i just said everybody shout jesus you know i don't mean to embarrass your intelligence you don't sit on a seat and shout jesus you've been singing a song before you came here you there was jesus more than 10 times in that song you kept shouting jesus jesus lover of my soul and nothing happened and here you are sitting and a man is saying just shout jesus once if you don't have this revelation you can sit down and say please what is we are not children here what is all this nonsense he told naman go to jordan watch seven times naman said me jordan there are clean rivers somewhere and the small girl said you are the one in trouble if you don't go and wash you can go back with your leprosy Two scriptures and then we'll pray. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 31. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. He says, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and also what his servant Moses God performs mighty things and creates that track record not just so that he alone will be believed God also wants the vessel he's using to be believed the Bible says they feared the Lord they believed the Lord and they believed his servant they believed the Lord and they believed his servant you believe the Lord you don't believe his servant you may not get any miracle exodus chapter 19 and verse 9 exodus chapter 19 and verse 9 and the lord said unto moses look up please lo i come unto thee in a thick cloud that the people may hear when i speak with thee and believe thee forever that means i can talk to you without the cloud but i keep that cloud as that evidence so that the people can trust that it is me you are talking to i'm i'm going that far because i don't just want the people to believe me alone i want them to believe you too because their receiving is dependent on their both their believing me god and they are believing you his servant it says and the lord said i come in a thick cloud so sometimes when god does some of these signs and wonders is is not really just for him alone when god does some of these things oh there's a lady here and someone is shouting another you know what god is doing he's using those things it's, it's a similitude of the cloud to help you see you can call somebody and say who is grace or who is um victory and you can say this is just guessing i'm sure it's just guessing but how do you guess that someone in this direction do you guess that one god does some of these things sometimes purposely to just address the the leftover of unbelief because you see some of us are coming from different christian experiences some of us have been 
our minds have been messed up by all kinds of theology all kinds of philosophies some of us have had bad experiences with all kinds of men of god prophets and whatever and chances are that when you come like this usually you will just add the man of god to the list of all the people and hope that he's just a better version of them and god says not so and he uses these signs to speak to you that you are in mount zion are we together it's amazing how a little miracle can just readjust your unbelief immediately readjust your unbelief while the devil is trying to lie to you can your life be changed all of a sudden the the power will touch the person near you this somebody you shook hands with turn to your neighbor and say this and that so you know that the person uh, the person can be acting It's a very difficult thing for believers to believe God. But I think it's even harder to believe a man of God. And people have all kinds of justifications as to why they shouldn't believe men of God. But regardless of what your justifications are, if you believe God and don't believe the vessel, you will be established but you will not prosper. Are we together? Your prosperity is what gives evidence to your establishment must believe one word from God can turn your life around one prophetic word can turn your life around all these strange spirits that oppress people they don't just go because they are told to go no it takes the anointing I was talking with one of the protocol uh, people when we were coming down here and I told him I was shaking my head and then I was talking to him and I said I am amazed driving down to come for the miracle service now i said i am amazed at how people in africa and nigeria trivialize success i am shocked at how people um believe that success is about luck it's amazing how people can see a huge sacrifice and trivialize it and just make it look like i think these people are just fortunate is that true I, I, this were my contemplations while i was coming listen there's no result that happens in this kingdom by mistake no. including the testimony you are about to have that gentleman from ghana he did not just press this thing and found my name no 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 the anointing that is sent with that word works day or night are we together now there are many testimonies just like his that gentleman you see that now someone will tell you i was sitting and i had a dream how about those who buy new phones brand new phones brand new phones and then they open it and see koinonia messages inside how do you explain that A new phone not new uh, what they call that thing not new memory card I'm not talking about new memory card a new phone that you bought it tear rubber you are the one who opened it then the first thing you see inside is a message that answers your question who, who now who, how do you explain that listen listen we live in a world that is not natural it only manifests the spiritual naturally the, the 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 earlier you got this the better my brothers and my sisters hear me all that you see in this world is only a reflection say reflection the real control room in this our world is the realm of the spirit whoever can ascend this three-dimensional realm has the advantage of victory nothing happens that is physical are we together one of the reasons why many of us are seated here tonight among the many miracles we desire is finance oh nigerians finance you want to talk a good news to any honest nigerian right now in this day and age as we transit into the ember mode no matter speak about their spiritual life yes speak about their love for god passion new depths but please don't ignore that other one just even if it's in passing just say something about it finance many people want to see financial breakthrough 
many people are working and they are trusting God for great and remember the strange thing about finance do you know why listen I'm not talking about money we're going to pray shortly do you know why many believers are poor because in the kingdom finance is warfare money is not just an instrument to live well it's a weapon see listen oh dear what's it ecclesiastes 7 let me just talk a little you was uh, I, I didn't plan to say this but ecclesiastes 7 verse 12 let me show you something may god give somebody deliverance right now read it read it one to read for wisdom is a defense uh-huh and money is a defense just stop there so we know from the word that both wisdom and money is a defense now look up when the bible says you have a weapon what is a weapon something you use to both defend yourself and you can use also for attack is that true if you give me a weapon like a shield i use it for defense and the bible says one of the many weapons money is one of them and the bible says those weapons are not carnal the word not carnal means they are not man-made but my brother my sister this thing is man-made it was made by cbn that means this is not what god is talking about because this is man-made but the bible says this weapon that he calls money is not carnal he said it is mighty through god that means there is a spirit are you getting what i'm saying that means this thing is only the body the same way human being is called currency anything that moves is a living thing and that means there is a spirit inside the body to move it you are only seeing the body where is the spirit that moves it that's why it can enter a house you didn't ask it to go and it will go out by itself it can enter your account and still go out because it's warfare the bible says, believe is prophet there is something they can do that can do something to the many things including this this is what we chase all around because we think this is paper no this is not this is paper yes but there is a spirit behind it and this thing respects that spirit this is what you need to understand so the spirit can instruct it to leave you and it can leave you. no matter how hard working you are you can receive salary and all you have is part of this left and it can be instructed to leave you it will, you know it's going is going out of your life it just touches your hand and disappears because the weapons prosperity is warfare it's not just about money to buy car and houses money is a defense it can defend the gospel it can defend a man and the bible says all those weapons they are not carnal So if you ever see this looking for anybody, Naira does not look for men. Something makes it come. I, please, are you getting what I'm saying? If you can understand this alone, at least even if you don't know how it comes, you already know that it doesn't come by itself. These are the mysteries that surround our kingdom. You ever see anybody prosperous in the kingdom? My brothers and my sisters listen to me this is a spiritual realm you don't have to be a christian to believe it you just have to be alive this is a spiritual realm animals know it plants know it's a spiritual realm that's why you throw a seed in the ground and you cover it you don't leave it open you cover it because what happens there is none of your business now you just cover it and watch it happen and it grows to become a tree that you cannot push down a little seed when you planted it it had no roots the bible says just like you do not know the way of the wind nor how a woman 
how a child is formed in the womb of her that is with child you know and all of that so also you don't know the way of god the lord brought you here tonight because there are spiritual possibilities listen that are beyond the realm of the eyes are we together most times we believe only what we can see and understand and explain unfortunately in this kingdom there are things that you may not be able to explain when people come here to testify you see me sit quietly and i watch and many times i'm in shock as i watch the immutability of god's power in the lives of people the same way you are going to come up here to testify yes it's true what suddenly happens to you and then you have someone just call you and say we're sending you to us to get a job Hapa, my brothers and my sisters i've told you again and again that everybody who helps you has relatives too who i need whatever makes you to leave them and come to you is not normal that you are sitting and someone says i'm thinking of you who do you think you are I want to help you i want to bless you you step into prepared blessings blessings that you are as sure he said master we have toiled all night and jesus looked at them you know how to fish by waiting in the night and allowing the fish to come and rest on your net then you quickly pull it in the morning that's how you were trained but let me show you another technology cast your net to the right side master but we only have left and right <clears throat> This one is not brain work now. This one is not one plus one. I told you one plus one plus God is equal to whatever he says the answer should be. One plus one is two. But one plus one plus God is not equal to two. It's not even equal to 10,000. It's equal to any answer that God puts there. So one plus one can be equal infinity. God said so. Are we together now i'm saying this to build your faith tonight so that you will believe that god is able to do anything at all when you look at the way you got to hear about this ministry and the various ways the holy spirit walked with you till you came today you should know already that there is a god in heaven are we together now brothers and sisters i present to you this same god who can change your life who will change your life i'm saying this so that you don't just sit down and be clapping for others wow this is how god has changed this lady's life wow we are soon going to pray you must have a desperation and say lord i didn't come tonight to clap for anybody i left my journey wherever lord i know that you will visit me and i hold on to the horns of the altar while you are sitting the devil is telling you remember tomorrow by 12 your rent or embarrassment say satan go away and before the presence of god tomorrow is too far god can how many minutes does it take to do a transfer i believe him yes i do i believe him i believe him. i believe him. i believe he can change my life in one minute I want you to just mention everything you are trusting God to do tonight. Go ahead. Lord, I believe you for this. I believe you for that. Those outside, whether you are standing by the wall, whether you are standing in any of the overflows, and those following online, release your faith. Don't be distracted. Any spirit that distracts you in this moment now is of the devil. It's a Luciferian spirit. Let your spirit and let your attention be open. Yes, Lord, I believe you. Mention it. Don't say it's too big. That's the devil. Too big compared to what? pray believers lord i know you are able 
you are able to take away this reproach from this family talk to Jesus even if you find yourself crying just continue to speak Lord you are able change this situation turn my academics around Lord turn my finances around Lord I'm in a situation right now where only you the God of heaven can arise turn my ministry around Lord I'm confused I don't even know where to go right now I don't know whether to go to the left or to the right but I receive grace pray are you praying kill unbelief as you are praying don't let the devil tell you you are wasting your time God of heaven It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and by supplication, with thanksgiving, it says, make your request known. Don't assume it is known. Make your request known. Lord, I'm here tonight because I want you to turn the situation of my family around. Lord, there is a death sentence over my family, and you have to arise for me tonight. Lord, there is a death sentence over my life. Lord, I've been delayed 10 years of my life. I am backward 10 years. There has to be a way you restore me, oh God. Lord, I'm trusting you for the fruit of the womb. The gentleman who came here, seven children lost, including twins. Lord, I'm trusting you to refire my spiritual life. Something has happened to the anointing upon my life. Something has happened to the glory upon my destiny. I'm here tonight, oh God, turn my life around. Turn my life around something has happened the signs and wonders are no more like before the revelation and the grace and the utterance is not like before i'm here for a turnaround oh god my prayer life has died i'm here for a reawakening i no longer fast i no longer pray i don't know what has happened to me i cry for help One more prayer point Lord I believe you and I believe your servant I believe that anointing and I believe in its ability to turn my life around walk on any unbelief in my heart oh God and take it out tonight go ahead and pray every spirit of doubt every spirit of fear
please participate in everything we are doing it's going to be a very fast one but let your spirit be open the spirit of the lord is upon me because the lord the same lord that you are instructed to believe have anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted now listen this is why he anointed me because there is an agenda but that that agenda cannot be achieved just by a well-meaning heart it takes more than sincerity to bind up a broken heart to proclaim liberty now i like this one to proclaim to declare that the time has come for you to walk free it says and the opening of prison my brothers and my sisters there can be men physically walking but they are in prison next verse verse 2 to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord and the day of vengeance of our god to comfort all those who mourn it takes more than a handkerchief to comfort men it takes the anointing verse 3 to appoint unto them that mourn in zion now this is the part i like to give them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning hallelujah the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified so the end of it is for god to be glorified but not in the current state no so anything in your family make sure you carry your family along in this miracle service don't just stand alone to receive i've told you if you are blessed and your family members are not blessed you are not free you are not free at all if you are the only one who is alive and everybody is just dying like a chicken you are still not free are we together now thank you jesus christ let me give us one last prayer for you. father every desire i brought here tonight i'm not walking back with it lift your voice and pray every let your faith rise as you pray. Shalakata barakato. Talato shabra hasikete malakata. Shakata kata barakata barateke barakush. Every desire. Visit me, O oh God, completely. The God who touches my spiritual life can touch my finances too. The God who touches my body can touch my womb too. Lord, I insist. I insist for completeness.
going to ask to come out. If the anointing comes upon your life right now, then the Lord. Okay. I want to pray a prayer now. Please be your brother's keeper, whether you are inside or outside. It's because of what will happen when I pray. The anointing will come and people will act out what I'm saying physically. That's why I'm saying you should. You should just hold them. Are we together now? The Lord is asking me to release speed. Listen, speed is a very powerful thing. When that anointing comes, you will start running like Elijah. That's why I'm saying hold them. Right now, I stretch my hands inside, outside, online, and I declare, Spirit of the living God, there are men and women here who have been delayed, and speed must come upon them. Right now, I declare at the count of three, one, two, three, receive that grace. I command speed, speed right now, speed. Let the hand of God come upon you. The Bible says the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. I command speed, receive it. It's coming on you now. Some of you is coming on you for the sake of your family. It's not just you alone. It's coming on you for the sake of your family. Let the chains be broken. I release speed. Speed in one month. In one month. I'm prophesying that in one month, what has not been done in five years, in one month, receive that grace. I energize your spirit, man. Speed. When speed comes upon a family, you will see it in the result. When speed comes upon your spiritual life, when speed comes upon your academics, I'm praying again. The angels that ride upon the chariots are bringing you speed. I release that grace. Let that anointing come upon you. Speed, speed, in the name of Jesus Christ. Speed. fire this fire is a mystery it was a reality borrowed from the realm of the spirit that we use here fire does not run away from any element fire is the only thing that all other elements must fit whether you put metal the metal will be hot wood will be burnt rubber will be melted there is nothing that stands fire other things can stand water but not fire are we together now? He said he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. When the Holy Spirit, listen, is moving to break chains, he moves as fire. Do you know why? Because fire destroys every other thing, yet it is not destroyed. It is not solid. It is not liquid. Are we together? It looks like gas, but it's there. You are seeing it. You can't hold it. You can't cage fire. You can't lock it up. It's not restrained by anything. The Holy Ghost is going to move right now in this place as fire. Listen. This fire, I want you to bring those people out. This fire you see will bring an end. Now, believe me when I tell you this. Will bring an end to many captivities. Many captivities. At the count of three, I just want you to shout with me that word fire. That word fire. And many of you will be surprised. In the name of Jesus. Where Sam, there's a song in my spirit. When we sing that song, what's the name of that song? Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Am I correct? So you know what I'm talking about. So you sing that song. 
by the time we pray in the name of Jesus I'm stretching my hands right now Spirit of the Lord you seek to reveal yourself as fire that consuming fire no power and no spirit even spirits can be burnt by fire in the name of Jesus I declare that any operation that is not of God at the count of three by the mystery of the Holy Ghost as fire let there be deliverance let there be refining let there be the breaking of chains are you ready now one two three bring them out fire the mystery of fire Shabos Katabarata Eketeleketo Samakatosh Randa Selegetelaya Sokonia Kata Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind Spirit of victory Shabakatalakatosh Over us with your wind Sepreketeke Kaparado Shalakatana I declare any chain if there is anyone under the sound of my voice and any chain has held your destiny by the mystery of this fire I'm speaking by this apostolic and prophetic grace I decree and declare to the heavens at the count of three may that fire locate chains in this place now one two three chains be broken chains be broken Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Sing below, blow, blow, blow like the mighty. Spirit of victory, Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Cover us with your wings. Hallelujah, Madam. Please clear the way for me. These women, tap these women for me. One, two, and the other person, three. Please come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. You are welcome. Your first time here? I came here last week. Okay, you were here last week and you too. Um, is, this the, is this the mama I asked to come? I think it's someone else I saw, but when you are here, we'll honor you. But I want to pray for you. Madam, look at me. I'm seeing witchcraft in your life and your family. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? You are coming from Abuja. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, man. Look at me. I know you believe in the power of God. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end every oppression of darkness. Mama, I decree and declare, in one month, your life will turn around into surprise you. In one month. In the name of Jesus Christ, where is that man that came from my Duguri? 
the one who came to give you a testimony mama let me pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is saying I should tell you that the oppression is over look I've seen fire is leaving my hands and is coming upon you in the name of Jesus Christ please where is that man we have to hurry up there's, there's a lot to do in the name of Jesus Christ mama I decree and declare over your life that fire the Lord it looks like you are an elderly woman but the Lord is going to use you mightily what you are receiving now is not just a miracle yet you are receiving an impartation you will begin to know the Holy Spirit in a very intimate way hold my hand Spirit of the Living God you seek to use this dear mother in the name of Jesus Christ you will know the Holy Spirit in supernatural ways his fire will come upon your life and he will use you in a very mighty way. In the name of Jesus, come. You are the man that came from Eduguri. What is this? Your CV. You are trusting God for a job. And who is this? Hold it. Do you believe that if I pray for you, you are returning with a job? You believe that? Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I release the anointing upon you and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let there be that miracle. You go and return with your job, sir. Let me pray for you, man. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you and I declare that the oppression of darkness comes to an end. A complete end over your life in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ we're going to pray right now but let me just um, the Lord is showing me what you sometimes this time 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 just affects you but I'm praying right now and I'm seeing letters and I'm seeing on the letter, congratulations, listen. And I'm seeing that this is a symbolism of breakthrough. Listen, let me tell you, except God is not God. If this anointing that I'm seeing touches you, then you and your family must stand here and testify. I'm stretching my hands right now. Lord, you are showing me this. In the name of Jesus, this is a symbol of breakthrough. I stretch my hands. Every family and every person that must receive of this grace. I'm stretching my hands now. You must testify. I release upon you that grace. You must testify. I declare whatever it will translate to, whether a job, whether increase, whether promotion, I command it, I declare it, I decree it. In the name of Jesus, I command it, I decree it, I declare it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hold the hands of this lady. This one, hold the hands of this lady. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands right now and I declare it's time for your family to rise. I'm speaking it by the spirit of prophecy and I decree and declare every embargo that holds onto that family, I command that is gone now. In the name of Jesus, it is gone. I curse the power of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ, Stretch your hands towards me. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. And there are many of you, there is no grace on the works of your hands. I look and in the spirit, I don't see the blessing of the Lord working. That's what is responsible for hardship. It's not like you are not employed or you are not doing this, but in the name of Jesus, I stand representing the spirit of God. And I stretch my hands back to you. I'm declaring still that ministry of fire. Many of you will be surprised. 
whatever it is you are involved in god is about to bring grace upon it i stretch my hands right now at the count of three may the fire of god come through your hands into your life lord i pray in the name of jesus whatever has not been working in your life i force it to work right now receive that anointing i force it to work now inside outside i force it to work now those following online i pray and i speak whatever it is that you are doing i declare the blessing i activate the blessing upon the work of your hand i take away hardship from your life in the name of jesus christ i take away hardship from your life in the name of jesus christ Ya bone na kawo sujada ne na sujada ne na kawo the lord is opening the eyes of people into where your blessing is i'm seeing fire still this fire thing coming on the eyes of people physically you will feel fire burning and ideas the lord is birthing things is is a birthing in the spirit i release that grace right now in the name of jesus lord all those who must see show them oh god where their blessings are stationed so that they stop dilly-dallying around life i decree and declare receive that grace the grace of an open eye the grace of an open vision may the lord show you where the resources of your destiny is may the lord show you where your helpers are in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah. This, the prayer is for everybody, eh? But this particular prayer now is for ladies. The Lord is showing me destinies that must be changed. Outwardly, you are beautiful, you are good looking, you are virtuous, you are wonderful. But in the realm of the spirit, it's not what we are seeing physically that we are seeing in, this, in the realm of the spirit. A man with an ugly situation sat down at a gate called beautiful. The gate was beautiful, but the man's life was nonsense. There are many people you can stand. I'm, I'm saying everybody, but this is specifically for our sisters. And it's not just the issue of marriage. I'm not talking about marriage alone that there is a fragrance a presence that can ooze from you and bring favor to your life but many of you physically they look at you and you look like you are beautiful you are this you are that but in the realm of the spirit there are powers sitting on people's destiny in the name of jesus lift your hands i want to pray for you that that force that veil must be torn In the name of Jesus, ah, I'm seeing a strange grace that is coming on many people, especially our sisters. I declare any wrong identity that you are given in the realm of the spirit that is not a reflection of your true identity, any exchange that has been made in the realm of the spirit so that physically you should be blessed, but in the realm of the spirit you are carrying another person's destiny right now by the fire of the holy ghost sisters may that anointing come upon you now may that grace come upon you now i declare anyone's destiny here that has been changed and switched and manipulated in the realm of the spirit so that what you look like is not a reflection of what your destiny is i change it now in the name of jesus I change it now in the name of Jesus.
Listen. A man's destiny can be exchanged. It's true. Have you not read in the Bible where kings slaughtered their children to prolong their own lives? A man's destiny can be a shadow of something else. You know you are alive, but this is not your life. You know that you are living another person's script. I'm saying it again. In the name that is above all names. Sir, come. I don't know you, but I want to pray for you, sir. God is going to turn your life around. And you see this prayer that I'm saying generally, this prayer, sir, is for you. You are a shadow of your life, of your, is your dad. Where did he come from? From my hair. From what? From my hair. Daddy, I'm going to pray for you. This is not just about your leg. Huh? This is about your destiny. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare Shalos Kapra Hasegete Barandos Kapriya Shata Ente Skalabra Hafas Kadabara Koto Supriya Takataj Mande Kres Koda Hashabari Katos Kada Natos Kada Natos Kada Mashada Kata Empre Kete Koto Koto Bat Sada Balakata Shapres Kete 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 Balakata Shabriya Takata In the name of Jesus, anyone who has exchanged your destiny, sir. I decree and declare restoration now. You are the daughter, hold my hands. I pray for you. Look at me. You are a wonderful lady, huh? But bad things continue to happen in your life. Huh? You are a nice lady. Are you married? Am I wrong with that? Don't worry. I know why I'm saying you get what I'm saying now. Because what I'm seeing, this is a spirit. You are a nice lady, but people continue to misunderstand you. Yes, sir, yes, Good sir. things and people look at you. In the eye of many people now, you are, you are a devil, you are a terrible lady, yes, but it's sir. not true. You have a very beautiful heart. This is what happens when... Do you know that there are spirits that make sure you are misrepresented in the eyes of people? A ministry can be under this captivity. No matter... The Bible says, don't let your good evil spoken of you can be nice to somebody like it's happening to many of you and people end up fighting you you bought something for them and they end up you are saying what is this i pray for you and the person says so you are trying to say i'm the one who is not spiritual it's a spirit my dear i want to pray for you huh? this thing is not just about your marriage that is you know things have gone wrong you're a wonderful lady huh? favor will come close to you but then never enter your life yes. What do you do? I'm working in a security. Uh, you are a security? Yes. Did you go to school? Yes. You are running your masters. My dear, do you believe God can change your life yes, now? Yes, sir. I believe, sir. Hold my hands. To appoint unto them. You see that? To appoint. This one is a prophet's reward. It's not just that God is saying Buddhist. There is something in the spirit called a prophet's reward. The possibilities that accompany an office, I declare in the name of the God of heaven whom I represent, may your life change this night in a way that will surprise you. Listen, I lift you from this security work you are doing and I put you in a position that befits your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, Daddy, sir, I'm praying for your daughter in your presence. This lady will come here and give a testimony that even you, as a father, will say, This one is the Lord's doing. Are we together now? I declare it, I decree it done right now. Hear me. I don't care whether you are working or not. If you are not in the rightful place as ordained by God, I want to pray a very serious prayer. Because there are people, the work you are doing is a nonsense work. That work is, it has robbed your spiritual life. It has destroyed your relationship. Because of that work, no man can see you to marry you. Demonic work that closes you everywhere. I decree and declare. I stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace. If you are in a place that is not your assigned place of destiny, 
I take you out of that place and I shift you to the place of destiny. I shift I shift you in the spirit. I shift you by prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, if the widow of Zarephath was not where the prophet met her, that's how her miracle would have gone. It matters that you are in the right place at the time God sends your miracle. Some of these things in the name of employment, they are traps of the devil. I'm not saying it's not good to work, don't get me wrong. But many of them are traps from the peace of hell. There are people whose spiritual lives have gone down from heaven to earth simply in the name of job are we together nonsense job that on sunday you're on your way going to church your boss calls you and says you must come and resume what shall it profit a man if you gain the what is it is that the whole world how much is the salary lose your soul for peanuts i declare again in the name of jesus may my god relocate someone here by the power of the holy spirit May my God relocate a destiny, relocate a family. If you are not in your assigned place, I shift you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know, listen, we are going to pray for the sick shortly. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, he will make sure they get visa. Ah, Pastor Jay, it's good to see you. There are people that the devil wants to destroy them. They will get visa to UK. They think it's breakthrough, but they have gone away from their place of destiny. God spoke to Jonah. Go to Nineveh. Jonah entered a boat on his way to Tarsus. And because of that wrong journey, people lost their properties. People lost. He entered a boat. And made people to start destroying their lives. They were almost dying because a man was not in sync with seasons. Let me tell you this it matters that God meets you at the place where your blessing is waiting for you. The devil can relocate people and, and destroy your life. There are many Nigerians outside this country whose destiny is ordained by God to be in this country. You see them roaming around like armed robbers around the world in the name of abroad. And there are others whose destinies are abroad. And the devil will make sure that he will peg them somewhere. And Isaac sold in that land. It's not just that he sold. The place he sold matters. Isaac sold in that land. Abraham, take now thy son and go. Go to a location. That's where I will meet with you. God is everywhere. But destiny does not meet with men everywhere. You must have the discernment to understand your season of visitation. I repeat this. You see me speaking like this. I'm speaking by the Spirit. There are some of you. It's an instruction from God to you. Don't be careless about your life. Look at how many Nigerians. You go to embassies and see nigerians they want to go abroad by fire by force ask them why they will say greener pastures i've told you greener pastures is not in any physical location on earth greener pastures is in the world when i sent the lackers down anything not when he went jesus instructed them and said do not go go only to the lost tribe of israel don't go outside that camp because salvation was for the Jews first. If they went to the Gentiles, they would have received a rich shock. Direction. Direction. Please, in one minute before we pray for the sick, lift your voice and say, Lord, direct me. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Direct me. There is a way that seemed right unto a man, unto a woman, unto a family. Direction. Your blessing is not just generically in US or UK. There are people suffering in every nation. It takes the leadership of the spirit.
Alléluia. Alléluia. Praise the Lord. Now, two things we are going to do very quickly. And I know you have been doing this, but please, I want to plead with you to do it with understanding. Most times we do things in this kingdom without understanding. That's why we are not blessed. Are we together? We are going to pray for the sick now. Don't walk out here if you expect to walk back the same way. Come here convincing, knowing that God is going to touch you. And while we are doing that, uh, your prayer, if you don't have your prayer request, please write it quickly. Write it quickly. And in case your faith, you came here with a faith that is weak, you did write some vital things, you can add it quickly. Those online, you can send it. You can send your prayer request very quickly. Now, we are going to do this very fast because our time is gone. Thank God Pastor Jax is here. Are we together now? Overflow. Listen, let's not be rowdy. Overflow. One outside will walk to your projector stand. Overflow. Two. You also walk to your projector stand. Overflow. Three. Walk to your projector stand. Those who are in here, you are trusting God to touch you, to touch your family members. You can make your way and come and stand orderly in front here now. Please, quickly, quickly. Let's do that very quickly. While we are doing that, please, if you have written your prayer request, I want you to wave it. And ushers, you may find a way of splitting yourself very quickly. Let's, let's have ushers. If the ushers are not in our PR department, you can join them. And then let's make it very fast. Make sure everyone's request um, is obtained, please. For those online, I want you to believe by faith. If you are still here to write, just write it. Ushers, please. There are hands all around. Let's help out. Protocol can also help so that we make sure that everyone's request. If it's a text on your phone and you don't have the opportunity to write it down while I'm praying, you can just connect with it. It's not just a ritual. Believe in what we are doing. Jesus, we stand by this corporate grace and this corporate anointing. Pastor Jax Ejimi, there. Um, Pastor Alpha, Benga, Overflow 1. Pastor Femi, Promise, Overflow 2. Please, quickly, quickly. Let's go there and let's trust God to touch the people. God has anointed this ministry and he has given us the grace to be the extension of the hand of Jesus over your life and I want you to agree. I want you to believe. The worship team will lead us in a moment of praise and worship while we pray. And please listen, except the people are prophesying to you or they are talking to you, just a touch. I want you to believe by faith. Are we together? You don't have to start giving them an explanation. This is why I'm here. Don't worry. Just connect by faith. If there is a word for you, the word will be given to you. Otherwise, just believe by faith. Father, we thank you. You call this place Koinonia and this meeting a miracle service. Lord, we pray for those online and those within. We decree and declare. Let there be a free flow of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Lord, let this touch not just be the touch of men. Let it be the touch of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let every one of these people come and testify here. In the name of Jesus. Now, those of you who, when you submit your prayer request, don't just be staring. This is not a cinema. You should be praying. Are we together? Because shortly after this, I will pray on this and I will speak over our lives. Prophecy is very powerful. So whilst you are standing there, whether you are you know up here or down you should be prayerful spiritualize your mentality now is not the time to laugh around and be talking carelessly let your spirit be alive hallelujah god bless you we heal 
right now in Jesus' name. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we heal right now.
That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. And that's what my song will be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. 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 Come on, say. what my song will be and that's what my song will be hallelujah that's what my song will be that's what my song will be that's what my song will be Please if you are here to submit your request, just do it as soon as we are done. There are people waving their request there. So while the worship team is leading us, please make sure that, make sure that you are in the spirit of worship. I know that you are feeling it, but make sure your heart is connected. So Alpha and Omega. We worship your name. Yeah. We worship your name. 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 Just pray in the spirit in one minute. Those following from any nation of the world, I'd like you to just pray. We're just going to pray and speak over this. Go ahead. Stretch your hands. We're praying on this request. Shalabakaruta sabre digetekata baladaba. Nataka parakato shadabre digete beledebos. Father, let your people return with testimonies. Hashala gata brada gata barakato sada brada gadech. In the cross asia sahasa barakato shabrada gada baladaba. Rakata branda gada baladabosh. Ebratos kada brandi gadi baladabosh. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let impossible situations be turned around by the Spirit of God. Lekato shata prate kato sabrada gadeba. 
Rakata Parata Paratosa de Pretegate Baladaba. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Lord, it is before you these prayers are laid out. Father, we give you praise. Thank you because whatsoever we ask in your name, that you will do. Thank you for prayers. Thank you for answers. Thank you for praises. Thank you for testimonies that abounds. Father, we give you praise for there's nothing impossible with you. We give you glory because we know situations that have stood hitherto unbeatable. Lord, you will bend things tonight in the name of Jesus. You will change things tonight in the name of Jesus. You will bring breakthroughs by the power of your spirit. You bring healings. You bring deliverance. You will bring breakthrough, financial breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. You bring changes, Lord, deaths, supernatural deaths we cancel by the power of your spirit. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. Father, we thank you. Thank you for angels, the release of angels. Angels on assignment. Angels bringing solutions and answers to prayers. Father, we give you praise because many will stand before you to give testimony and give glory to your name. For in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It has been declared in the name of Jesus every request here. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, we turn it into testimonies. And let some of them begin to manifest from this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be by the grace of God that by this time next month you will you will almost not have any request to write. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our time is gone, but I want you to lift your hands. I want to speak over your life now. Apostle, why do we do this all the time? Because this is how you program the destinies of people. These words you see, they are not just languages. It's not just the speaking. You know, I never cease to be amazed at how people's lives change overnight just because a word the bible says he sent a word to jacob not he spoke he sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon israel hallelujah and he blessed them saying and he blessed them not thinking saying in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that this month of September you are entering, let it be called your season of strange results. Let it be called your season of strange results. Anyone who has despised the grace of God upon your life, in the name of Jesus, may God use your life to prove a point. decree and declare over your spiritual life a new vista of insight and access into the mysteries of the spirit I release it upon you right now if you are a man of God here I pray may your ministry shift to a new dimension if you are a woman of God here I pray may your ministry enter a new dimension of power I declare that someone here may you encounter the power of God raw, the raw power of God the same way God comes to man may his power come to you may you know the mysteries of the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life this is a family of great favor I declare if this grace is not yet speaking in your life i declare by the hand of god almighty who brought that anointing upon my life and this house may favor practical favor begin to follow you from today in the name of jesus christ what you cannot do for yourself i ask my god to do it for you in this season 
if you are a man of God here I prophesy to you that the next time you stand upon this altar to dispense the word of God may you see a dimension of the spirit through your life and your ministry that will surprise you I know that there are many of us that are trusting God for all kinds of financial breakthrough I've taught you the principles of finances but there is a prophetic dimension of wealth are we together now and in the name of Jesus I declare the same grace that carried a raven and it brought bread to Elijah I decree and declare may that same grace carry your blessings and locate you with it in this season in the name of Jesus I pray for every family represented here in the name of Jesus and I say this from the depth of my heart enough is enough I prophesy it again enough is enough whatever represents setbacks in any family I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I command that an end comes to it this night every graduate here that is trusting God for a job you had the testimony here in the name of Jesus Christ both where you applied and where you didn't apply may the angel of the Lord see to it that a miracle job locates you those who are in business here in the name of Jesus business is spiritual the grace that will cause your business to command strange results. May that grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. If there is anyone here in any kind of trouble that needs the hand of God, that means if God does not step in for you, you know you are in trouble. I stand by the gift of prophecy and I decree and declare over your life, come out of that trouble now. Whether it's a financial trouble, whether it's whatever, come out of it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every attack on your destiny, I decree and declare from tonight, by the assignment of angels, we ward off that attack in Jesus' name. Whoever has been destined by God to help you rise, and either because of witchcraft or insensitivity in the spirit he has not been able to locate you in the name of jesus i declare i call them by the spirit and i command that they locate you <laughs> believe in every prayer that we're praying we're entering the ember months and many people associate this month with all kinds of demonic activity minus you <laughs> I say it again minus you everyone who is part of this prophetic family and connected to this family I declare the mystery of exemption over you in the name of Jesus Christ that when men say there is a casting down I welcome you into the greatest months that you have to face for this year. I decree and I declare over your life we're rounding up there are some of you nothing ever works in your life it's not like you are lazy it just doesn't work except it fails you to the point that even when you see success you are afraid of it because you know it will not last I declare not only will you be successful I command your results to last I say it again by the Spirit I command your results to last I forbid you from this experience of up today and down tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ any door that was once open and is now closed I reopen it in Jesus name 
I hope you believe everything I'm saying. Please believe it with all your heart. I pray for every student here. I don't know what challenge you may be having. Or I don't know what you are trusting God for. In the name of Jesus, I pray particularly for students that are supposed to have graduated and one thing or the other is keeping them. I don't care what needs to be done. Let it be done to move you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say it again. Let it be done to move you. There are some of our young ones that just wrote post UME. In the name of Jesus, there are some of you who the results you have seen now, from that result you will not get anything serious. I change that result now. I change that result now. I change that result now. Believe it, you are too young to walk in unbelief. I change that result now. Anyone assigned here program that you must die or that your loved ones as we enter this ember whether by accident as you are moving listen no i know our time is gone but i'm praying a very important prayer believers are careless and that's why sometimes we allow the devil to take advantage of us i declare whether by air or by land whether on bike kekena pep if it will crash you will never enter it i say it again if that vehicle is doomed for accident then i take you out of it but in the name of jesus if you enter it then it must not crash i pray for your finances again that in the name of jesus the worship team sang here and said ebenezer there is a god that can help men i pray for you directly finance that's the prayer i'm praying for you now i know you love god already i'm not doubting your passion for god but the resources that it will take especially for you my dear brothers it takes a lot for a young man to be established and it's not a blessing if you are just going old and old and old and you have to beg for tea and bread every day in the name of jesus the grace that helps men that can take a man from nowhere and establish him because you have believed the lord i command your establishment now He said keep us lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil i pray for you any orchestration of evil a trap of satan so that you will enter and it will destroy your life quarter to getting into that trap i declare in the name of jesus may the lord rescue you out of it two or three more prayers and we're done any friend in your life any useless association in your life that is not profiting you spiritually destiny wise financially i caught it from the realm of the spirit this night i ate it out of your life in the name of jesus let me tell you there is a saying show me your friends and i will show you your destiny some of us love god but the demon in our life is the spirit that keeps bringing the worst of every kind of friend you are born again but the people that come to like you to want to marry you are people who don't love god or you are a nice well-meaning brother but your friend is an arm robber your friend is a 419er your friend what any kind of wrong relationship whether you are aware or not in the name of jesus i'm speaking to you let there be a separation right now and i pray for you if there is any deceiver in your life may my god expose them in this season 
I know you don't like the prayer, but let me pray for you. If there is any deceiver in your life, I say it again, may the God of heaven expose them in this name. Whatever has tampered with your love for God, there is something called first love. First love is fire, fire for God fire for the house of god that they have to advise and encourage you now and say let us go he said i was glad not i was angry not i was dragging let me tell you if the passion for the house of god is dying in your life it's not a sign of spiritual growth it's a sign of an attack even if you think it's happening because you're a man of god that church they are not sharing anything that spirit is the spirit of the antichrist i declare fresh passion for the things of god fresh passion for the house of god you used to wake up in the morning and the first thing you think about is your bible but now you wake up the first thing is your phone the first thing is email the first thing is uh, what they call all those things social media all those things you are doing and before you know it you spend one hour there you say let me just do it for five minutes you wake up by three o'clock and you say i will study my bible but quickly you watch nigerian film all kinds of things in the name of jesus those things are not bad don't get me wrong but i don't care whatever it is if it is as taking the position of god i declare let it return back to his rightful position Let me rebuke the spirit of laziness before we share the grace because let me tell you i have seen people as a man of god and as a leader i have seen people who will never become anything listen nigerians and especially we around here let's trust god for grace to be serious when a young man is snoring your way you are sleeping you watch movie till 1 a.m and then you sleep till 11 a.m you are signing poverty with your destiny both god and satan agree that laziness leads to suffering are we together there are many of us here i, I don't hate you you know i love you with all my heart but your deliverance needs to be laziness 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 i'm not as concerned about our sisters but this our brothers you are the ones i'm talking to Sis, that doesn't mean that sisters should be lazy because some of you god is even speaking to you through this reduce those movies reduce all those facebook thing and all of that and sit down gentlemen receive grace grace to stay awake when others are sleeping believers are lazy people and we just imagine that just because we have the anointing things will happen just like that if you are a man here and you are a married man please hear me and you know you are not catering for your family i love you but i'm telling you the truth by the word of god you are not being responsible no matter what the excuse is receive grace tonight to sit down and find out what do i need to do to feed my family let no man believer here born of god you return back home and there's no food and they are asking you and you are acting as if that they have not paid school fees say what will i do is he responsible is he responsible before you have a child think and plan what are we going to do with this child that is coming not just that you give birth and then you start inconveniencing people in the name of jesus i declare the discipline to be diligent and the discipline to be responsible i release it upon you now every entitlement mentality that makes you believe someone somewhere should walk and just come and give you free success i cancel that wrong mentality now hallelujah we speak peace over zaria we speak peace over kaduna state and we speak peace over this nation we decree and declare that whether it's in the political or the economic sphere we declare that christ must be glorified in this season in the name of jesus christ and for all of you who are doing one thing or the other whether job whether ministry whatever it is i declare multiplication of results 
in the name of Jesus Christ before we take the altar call I want to encourage you please listen please listen everyone next Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.